welcome to my channel, Andrew Makes. If you want to know what a bottle of Rit dye and a tassel maker have in common, as we say in the South, I'm fixing to show you. This is part of my Make 9 2022 challenge. And if you aren't familiar, what I have chosen to do is sew a pattern from each of the past nine decades, from the 1940s all the way through from 2020 to present day. And the garment I'm going to show you today is part of that. It is from 2018, so I have 2010 to 2020 covered. And this pattern has a few twist and turns from what it originally was supposed to be, but it has turned out to be one of my favorite garments ever to date. I'm so excited to share it with you and show the journey of how it came about. And so far in my challenge, I have made something from the 1940s, the 1950s, the 1980s, the 2000 to 2010, and I have made something from the 70s. I have it completed, but I haven't done the video yet, and that'll be coming out soon. And I'm actually wearing what I made from the 50s. And I have a playlist that I'll link in the description box about it has my plans video where I show each pattern from each decade that I've chosen and also the videos that I've done so far that's dedicated to each pattern in each decade. So check that out if you haven't seen it. It's lots of fun and I'm pretty proud of it. And the pattern I'm going to show today is Simplicity 8689 and it's from 2018. And in my plans video, I had originally said I was going to make this view. But the first twist and turn of this adventure is when I was looking at the pattern and getting ready to cut out the pattern pieces and just checking everything over, I decided that I wanted to make this view, view A. This is a tunic and it has buttons down the front, but this is a dress, and it has gorgeous details. I cannot wait to show you guys this, but it has gathers around the shoulder, and then this bottom sleeve is gathered into the upper sleeve, and it has embroidery, or it says you can use applique on those sleeves, and then it has trim there, and there, and then it has a cord and it has tassels. And here are the line drawings. You might be able to see everything better on that, but it has this side front piece that sews into the yoke, and it also has trim around the hem. And it has trim going down where the side front attaches to the yoke. There's trim going there. And then where the lower sleeve attaches to the upper sleeve, there's trim there also. And then here's the back, and it has ties, which brings in the volume, which I really love. So the first twist and turn was changing my mind on what pattern I was going to make. And then I had four yards of bright optic white linen, gorgeous linen that I got from the fabricsstore.com and I will link their website in the description box. It was beautiful, but it was white and you could, it wasn't see-through, but it wasn't totally opaque either. So I wanted, for two reasons, I wanted to dye the fabric. Since it was white, I wouldn't be able to wear it as many seasons as I could if it weren't white, and also I wanted to work on the opacity so it wouldn't be as sheer, I guess. I can't think of a better word. So I decided to dye this fabric, and the only dyeing I've ever done before is a shibori dyeing, and I made my stepdaughter a quilted wall hanging using the shibori technique, and if I can find a picture of it, I will put it right here. It was so cool. I enjoyed it a lot, but other than that, that's all I've ever done. But I didn't want to do, I wanted to dye it a solid color. And I wanted some, a color that would work for almost all the seasons. So the vision I had in my head was I wanted like a very light tan color. All over, one color. So I went to Joanne and I got this Rit dye and the color is actually tan. 
and it was exactly what I was looking for. And they have instructions on the bottle where you can dye it in the washing machine if you want to. So I'm like, yes, please. So at the beginning of that adventure, I actually filmed it to share it with you. So here's what actually ended up happening. Okay, I've got the washer filling up with hot water and I put in one bottle of this Rit to Dye and the color is tan. And I added one cup of salt and one teaspoon of dishwashing liquid. And I've got my four yards of white linen fabric in there. They said that the dye will look green and you can see that. So we are going to let this fill up and agitate for a couple minutes and then let it soak for 30 minutes and see what happens. Okay, moment of truth. The cycle has completed. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, looks like we might have some splotches like right there. Let me get it out and spread it out and look at it. Yes, there are some random splotches. See where that is darker? And then there's another one. They're kind of, that's the light coming through the window, randomly placed. There's some more splotching. I may kind of like it though. I'm not sure. I think it's wet and it's going to look darker when it's wet, of course, but I think I'm going to dry it and then see what it looks like after that and then decide what I'm going to do. Okay, here it is, and before I put it in the dryer, I used this color fixative product to help seal the color, and it's supposed to enhance the color and also help keep it from fading. So I used this, and then I actually washed this fabric using detergent and dried it and it's showing up on camera a little lighter than it actually is. It's like a light, very light tan color like was on the dye bottle and then you can see the splotches that's a darker brown. I actually don't hate it. I kind of like it and I think and that white right there is just the light coming through the window doesn't actually look like that but this is a truer representation of it right here like I said I don't hate it I think I'm going to try to use this I like that it's very subtle and it's not all over and this kind of adds to the bohemian vibe of that dress so I think if I can strategically place the pattern pieces to have a little bit of the splotchiness on each piece to make it look like it was on purpose, I think it might work. So I am going to go for it. So I'm going to be showing you the garment up close on a hanger and I will insert pictures of me wearing it and I'll also try it on for you. And another fun fact about this pattern, I actually got this last summer. I went to a Joanne in a neighboring city that's about 20-25 minutes from my house and they were having a promotion, I guess you could call it, where if you bought two yards of fabric and it didn't have to be a continuous two yards, it could be two one yard cuts, they had a selection of patterns that they said were discontinued and you could get those patterns for one penny. So, of course, I took advantage of that. I think I got four patterns that day, and this was one of them. So I got this for a penny, which is super fun. And speaking of that trip to Joanne, here is a picture of my husband when, after I got finished shopping in Joanne and went out to the parking lot where he was waiting for me. He's a keeper. So as you can see, things didn't go as originally planned, but I absolutely love how it turned out. And what I think happened is I let it soak in the washer for 30 minutes. The instructions say to keep it in the dye for a minimum of 30 minutes. 
so I let it soak and I think it's supposed to actually agitate the entire time so I'm thinking that's why it didn't do the all over color. If you have experience doing this, let me know in the comments if that's what I should have done. But like I said, I'm so glad that it worked out the way it did because I love it. And here is my dress. It is so boho and cool. I love it so much. There is the front, and I'll get up close in a minute and show you the dye a little better and then also the details. But this linen is absolutely gorgeous. It is luxurious feeling. And I'll get up close and show you the details. Here is the trim. Like I said, the side front attaches to the yoke, and then there's a seam right here. And the pattern wants you to use rickrack here. That's what it suggests. But I didn't want to use rickrack, so I got this really pretty trim. I actually got it from Walmart. It's Simplicity brand, but it's sort of like burlap. And then it has those white, I guess you would call those flowers. And then it's also along the sleeve, where the lower sleeve attaches to the upper sleeve. And you can see some of the dye right there. And then this is trim also. The pattern said to use a cord, I guess like a drawstring cord, but I didn't want to do that. So I used this very pretty trim and I got it from Walmart also. It is still the Simplicity brand, but I got it at Walmart. And the trim is on these seams and on the sleeves. And then it's also on the hem, which I think is really pretty and then I like how the dye is just like random and I had fun cutting the pattern pieces out to make the dye look like it was on purpose <laughs> you can see I'm trying to show you the different dyed areas And there it is along the bottom of the skirt. And then there's tassels on the bottom of the trim. And I used my tassel maker. And I made my own tassel. And I already had this embroidery floss. And if I can find a link for that tassel maker in, the, in Amazon, an affiliate link, I'll post it in the description box. And then here's the back with some of the dye. And there it is along the bottom. And it also ties in the back and the, whoops, sorry about the light. And the pattern wanted you to use fabric to make the ties, but I used the same trim that I used for the front pieces right here that have the tassel on it. And I thought that was a very nice touch. But I just absolutely love it. It's so unique and definitely one of a kind. So I'm going to go try it on for you. But in the meantime, here are some pictures of me wearing it. for you and I forgot to mention another twist and turn. If you remember from the pattern envelope, it had embroidery or applique on the lower sleeve and I, I have an embroidery machine and I was planning on doing some embroidery on the sleeve. That's when the plan was for it to be all one color, but I think there's a lot going on with the trim and the cord and the tassels and the die, so I decided not to do any embroidery on the sleeve. 
but here's my dress and you'll probably be able to see more of the detail I guess with me wearing it and I think I said earlier that this trim was burlap but I don't think it is I don't know where that came from I think it's like little crochet stitches or something it's really pretty but it's not burlap I don't know where that came from like I said but you can hopefully see the dye a little better and then there's the gathers there and then this lower sleeve gathers into the upper sleeve and then that's where the trim is and then the cord and the tassels so fun I hope you can see the the dye a little better and then the sleeves with the elastic around the cuff and I'll turn around and here, I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to get up on the step in a minute so you can see the entire thing. But there's the tie, so you can cinch it in as little or as much as you want. And then here's, hopefully you can see the die there. And now I'll get up on the step so you can see the whole thing. There's the entire view, and I'll spread that out a little bit. Hopefully you can see the die. And I forgot to mention one of the most important parts. It has pockets. And here's the back. And I'll spread it out also, so hopefully you can see the die. And then the trim around the bottom of the hem. And like I was saying earlier, even though this wasn't my original plan in many ways, I absolutely love how it came out. And this is one of my favorite makes to date. And I think this is going to be my birthday dress this year. I love it that much. Let me know what you think. I hope you love it as much as I do. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.